Now this dealer has quite a few what I call exotic weapons, German, particularly German, Eastern Bloc and otherwise. You got a lot of German sniper rifles here. Uh, these are Johnson rifles. I mean, how many times will you see four World War II Johnson rifles in the same show? Uh, like never. Okay, and then here uh, are some uh, very fine original type German sniper rifles with the scopes. If you're a serious collector, you may be interested in those uh, with the high mount scope. Uh, I guess it's a high turret scope. And then here's some with the low scope. I gotta get my terminology correct, but they're all official World War II German sniper rifles, like you see in the movies. So we got some U.S. Springfield. We've got some, uh, I think, uh, let's see, what are those? Finnish rifles, all right? Finnish reworks in there with scopes. Semi-auto sniper rifles. And then we've got some others here. Looks like some Japanese. Now we've got Lugers. Oh, we've probably got, I don't know, 100 Lugers in this case? Maybe not, maybe 50. But uh, you want Lugers, look at that. World War One and World War II Lugers. Uh, this case is mostly P-38, German, World War II era P-38. Then you get all kinds of other World War II military automatic pistols. Your 45, 1911s up there. More 1911s over here. Singer. And there's a Singer. Uh, that's a very rare one right there. Uh, it's got a big tag on it. $85,000 you can get yourself a Singer 45. <clears throat> and then you got some Calibri. Okay, the Calibri are very, very small pistols. Very, very small. Those are like two inches long. And they fire a 2.7 millimeter cartridge. The ammo is pretty rare also, but how many times do you, there, there's one round of ammo on that thing, and that round is about a half inch long, and uh, about an eighth of an inch in diameter. That's your Calibri. There's a U.S. Navy model 1911. There's a uh, pistol carbine, Springfield pistol carbine from uh, Civil War, pre-Civil War era. Uh, here's a bunch more Palm pistols. And uh, I don't even know what you call these four-barrel pistols. Do you know what those are? They, the barrels move up as you shoot them. Okay. Made by Toma. That one of them is made by Toma, and the other one looks a little different. Two different models of, uh, I guess, harmonica pistols. I don't know. A couple of four-barrel uh, Derringers, uh, pepper boxes, several different types of pepper boxes, revolvers, Colts, Remington, Smith & Wesson. Uh, Sniper scopes, World War II and so forth. Japanese. Uh, Japanese three barrel flare pistol. Those things look pretty ugly. Pretty deadly. Oh, two barrel over here, and there's a three barrel over there. It's scarcer. Scarcer thing is the holster. And there's a holster. That's the rarest part. Broom handle. Broom handle military pistols with uh, shoulder stock. They all have shoulder stock. Probably some are matching. That means they have the same serial number as the pistol. Uh, this is uh, just an incredible collection of uh, military uh, handguns and long guns. There's probably, I, what would you estimate the value of all this merchandise out here? Do you have any idea? About 300,000. 300,000. They have kept their insurance policy up to date and they have an idea of what it is, but you're looking at $300,000 worth. Next one. Here's a gun that belonged to Joe DiMaggio, a shotgun. Okay, and we'll show you close up the engraving on it. Wonderful shotgun. I didn't turn it over to look at the uh, maker. Is that a Winchester it's a shotgun? Winchester Model 21. You okay. Turn it over. That's the uh, the best Winchester shotgun ever made. Most people say is a Model 21. Uh -huh. Very collectible. Okay, oh, yes. he's going to take turn it over and let us look. Look at the burl wood stock. That's that's a select stock right oh, there. Yeah. Yeah, good stock. Checkered grip. Winchester 21, like I say, you can kind of distinguish it by that uh, that kind of point right there. That, that, that they all yeah. look like that. 
and uh, <laughs> one of the finest shotguns there ever was. <laughs> there you go, Joe DiMaggio's shotgun. Yeah. And there he is. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Let's look at some of the other items we've got here. There's a beautiful Browning 22 yes. rifle. Yeah. Well, you want to give it to me again? And there's a bunch of other fine pieces. Not bad. Some of them. <laughs> Winchesters down here. Lever action vintage Winchesters. Bolt action rifle weapons. Swords particularly. These are early swords. 18th century American horseman sword is one of them. The one with the, uh, is that a bone or an ivory grip there? Ivory grip. Ivory bone. grip, okay. And what do you call this green stuff? Is there a name for that? It's uh, not with arsenic, actually. Okay. It's made with arsenic. It's, it's got the British coat of arms on the blade. Oh. Mm -hmm. Most of this is Revolutionary War. Revolutionary War era. Committee of Safety musket. Yeah. Weapons, okay. Yeah. Committee of Safety. This is a Committee of Safety musket yes. right here? 1775. Right. Very historic. Silver mounted. Silver pistol. mounted. Well, There's a silver mounted pistol. You see the silver the on the side of it? Isn't it beautiful? Great All that is specially cast. And look at that ugly animal on the end there. Okay. Engraving. It's made by Griffin and Toe, Revolutionary War. Okay. Makers to His Majesty. Griffin and Toe. All right. Some nice stuff in the case. Some more modern stuff. Pictures of apprehended perpetrators. Yes, that's right. This gentleman has a lot of rifle bolts and bayonets. A very nice banner. If you're a Banat collector, you should be here buying his banner. Yes. John, you know what I'm about Colt? 